Hi, my name's Joe Brewer, and I want to create a new field of science that integrates all the knowledge in the cognitive and behavioral sciences and uses it to create rigorous methodologies for addressing global change in the 21st century. Specifically, I want to study how we collectively respond to what I call systemic risk. By systemic risk, I mean that there are problems that arise in one area that affect one system that then propagate into other areas and other systems and can have a cascade effect of uh, damage and harm. A recent example is the earthquake that took place off of the coast of Japan in early 2011 that caused the creation of a tsunami. That tsunami flooded the lowland areas of Japan. It spread to where there were nuclear reactors. It went over their walls. It flooded the reactors, caused a meltdown of the core of those reactors, which then caused a huge explosion, a release of radioactive material into the atmosphere that's contaminated the region and, to some extent, various parts of the world. So we have these problems where there are different systems that are all interconnected with each other, and the risks uh, flow from one system to another in often unexpected ways, ways that we didn't anticipate when we designed those systems. And what I found in the last several years is that there's a particular piece of this problem that is really essential to get right if we're going to solve it. And that piece is human beings' embeddedness into the system. How do people think about and understand the systems that they're embedded in? What are the tools and procedures, the protocols that they use to engage with these different systems? Say, when there's a disaster, uh, what are the emergency response protocols? How does disaster relief get done? How does uh, medical care get provided to people on the ground? All the ways that human beings respond en masse to these big challenges. What I found is that there are a lot of assumptions out there about human beings. They're often based on what I call a priori philosophy, which means assumptions that are coming about beforehand, before uh, thinking through how people actually work. But what's been happening is this, there's a silent revolution in academia where in the cognitive and behavioral sciences, a new view of human nature is emerging that's scientifically rigorous, empir empirically sound, testable, and extremely useful for answering questions about how human beings connect up or interface with global systems. And unfortunately, all of the knowledge in cognitive science, like so many fields of knowledge in academia and in the world, they're siloed from each other into disciplines like psychology and even more narrowly, personality research or cognitive neuroscience or uh, other areas like linguistics and the study of language across cultures. And so what I what I found in my study of cognitive science is that too many researchers and practitioners are stuck within those categories as boxes. They don't know about the findings and the tools that are coming out of other areas. And increasingly, the problems that they have to address require higher levels of synthesis and integration of knowledge in order for them to be solved. So what I'm proposing to do is to enter a PhD program, preferably at a university that has a wide array of very forward-thinking research centers. And what I want to do is to map out the knowledge, the methodologies that exist in the cognitive and behavioral sciences that can be packaged together to create more robust tools for analysis as well as implementation tools for actually going in and changing systems, designing them so that the human interface works better so that we can respond to systemic threats. Now, one example to really get you thinking more clearly about this, there's an area of research in cognitive psychology that looks at what's called metacognition in group process, which is basically looking at tools that are used by people in a group that help them to work together as a group to have a collective intelligence. 
A really simple example is a visualization tool. So there might be the, that there's a flow chart that shows everyone what the project is, what problem they're solving, what all the vital pieces are, the timeline that needs to be used to solve them, and what each person's part is, their tasks and responsibilities, to go through that flow chart and help contribute to solving a more complex task. So that would be an example of a form of metacognition, a way of thinking embedded outside of the individual and in the group that's used to help them see the complexity and to see their place in addressing the complexity effectively and fulfilling their role. So what I want to do is create an, an inventory, if you will, or a map, a taxonomy of all the different tools and theories and the methodologies that exist in the cognitive and behavioral sciences that could be used for disaster relief, for designing change in urban landscapes to help us transition away from fossil fuels and other big challenges. And I want to apply this knowledge in collaboration with people who are on the ground trying to implement these solutions. Now, right now, I feel like there's a desperate need for this. I feel like it doesn't really exist anywhere. And it's something that I've been working on for a number of years. And I know that I can't finish it without going back into academia pursuing a PhD and partnering with leading researchers and scholars in a very vast array of fields to accomplish the goal. So that's why I've been thinking about pursuing a PhD, and that's what I hope to accomplish, is to create a new science, if you will, of human interface methodologies for addressing global challenges. And I'd love your help to, to get there. So if you have ideas of people who have tools and insights, whose work could be useful, please share them with me. If you know of academic programs that could help me to do this, I actually have one in mind. My, my number one choice is to go to, the, to Oxford in the UK and work at their Martin School for 21st Century Challenges. But maybe you know of other places that could be useful as well. And if you know of people who would like to see this work done, I'd really like to talk to them. So please put them in touch with me. I'll include my contact information with this post. And I'd love to talk more with anyone and everyone who would like to help make this dream into a reality. Thank you.